For this month, uh, the title for today is Leverage Steel, and I'm going to show you the analysis and design of steel boxes. Also, you have the chat window available and the question and answers. So, uh, if you have any questions during the presentation, feel free to ask. I will answer it as we uh, go along. And this meeting, I will do it a little bit different. I will just do it uh, basically showing you step by step how to generate uh, bridge, a steel box, or steel tops, as they call it, or bridges. So, Let's start. Well, the product for today is Leverage Steel, that is uh, for the modeling, design, analysis, and low rating system for steel bridges. When Leverage was uh, created many years ago, we started with uh, steel eye girders, right, uh, built up or roller shapes, the full design of that, and as well we included for the analysis the uh, line girder and grillage method. Now, for the past two years already, we included on the design now the long-awaited <laughs> steel boxes. And on that type of bridges, we make no difference if they are a straight or curved uh, or curved bridges. So, and I know that I understand that some other software just they make a difference between, uh, oh, it's a steel curve or no curve, but it, it, for us, we just follow the alignment. So, if the alignment happens to be that it's on curve, well, the eye curve will be curved on the box as well. Okay? So, saying that, let's go straight to the software and see how we do this. Okay? So, exiting the PowerPoint. Right? And let's go with Leap Steel. So, I got the software already fired up here on my screen. And expand it, right? And the workflow in Leap Steel, uh, if you are familiar with how to do steel light girders, so this presentation will be kind of basic to you, <laughs> but if you are new into the software, then uh, we make it very uh, step-by-step -step, uh, training, if you will. So, how it works. First, you got the option to start, of course, with a brand new file, and uh, white canvas, right? So, uh, if you have an alignment, let's see, you may have an alignment coming from our roadway software, Geopack, maybe inroads, some other parts of the world could be MX road. So, you need to bring the alignment profile information from this software. The way to do it is very simple, and as the workflow of the software is from the top, down. So, just the first option, it will be open CV. And on that, you will be asked to open a GPK file, that's from Geopack, or an ALG file from Ingroups. And doing that, you will load the alignment and profile for your bridge. In case that you don't have an alignment, for example, right, uh, so then you can also go straight here to alignments, and enter your own alignment. Okay, you have to be careful, of course, to enter the proper coordinates uh, and all of that. See, you have to start with the coordinate type and then enter the geometry of your alignment. Right? So, you enter the alignment. Not only that, you may enter also the profile. Right? Even if you don't have a profile, you can make it flat or just a standard elevation. Right? An alignment in which the stationing, of course, corresponds to the stationing going on the alignment. Okay? So, the next step on geometry will be to define the cross-section. Right? So, what is the width of the deck and all of that, and what is the slope? So, here, for example, I got from the crown line, right? from the crown line, I got uh, 21 feet to the left and 25 feet, 21 feet to the right, and is being represented by point one, two, and three. And the profile grade, that's what this PG is here, it's being run 
along point two. So basically the profile here, I'm saying that it's running at the ground line. If I do one, usually that's not the case, it's basically I'm running the profile along the left edge of the bridge. So this is not the case, this is two. Okay. Now, the slopes also you have to keep in mind, uh, here I got a flat, but to illustrate the idea, normal ground slope, normal ground, we're used to go with minus 2% in both directions, right? Not this. Here, it's from point 0.1 to 2, it's going up, right? And from point, uh, let me exaggerate so you can see, here from point 0.1 to 2, let's see, it's going 6%, just to show you that it's going up. And then from two to three, it's going down. So it would be a kind of normal ground representation, right? So it's that. So it's plus going up, minus going down. So a real normal ground bridge, it would be maybe plus 2% and minus 2% with the profile running on the ground. Right? Now we are doing this in design mode. We enter these and we're going to do it in design mode. Right? But then what about rating? Yes. Here on the mode that we come, we're doing design first. When we finish building the bridge, we're going to design it. And then later we can switch and say, oh, let's switch this mode to rating and then we can do low rating on that bridge too. Okay? So, now, that's it. That's the geometry, right? Now, on that geometry, then I can go and see alignment, profile, and cross-section. Alignment, alignment, profile, and cross-section define a roadway. Okay? And that's basically the roadway that I created inside the program that my bridge with, uh, is going to be built on. So I'm done with the geometry part. Okay? Now, <clears throat> Let's locate some of the support lines. So the support lines, uh, I'm going to do it uh, for support. So the first support, oh, I hit okay. <laughs> so the first support, as I add it, will be an abutment, right? And for example, it's gonna start at the station two plus zero zero. It's not gonna be a skew, so it's normal. Second support is gonna be a pier. I can key in the station. Or I can maybe key in the span length. Be, let's see, 187. Right? And the third support, it's going to be the next span, so a distance from the support two, and that's, let's make this a longer span, 35. And then the last support is going to be the other abutment, and uh, it's going to be a distance from three, and it's going to be, let's see, another. 187. Right? All this information, as you can see, their skew and all that, I can change it as well. Right? Uh, but let's, I'm trying this. Let's see, I'm, I'm just uh, generating the bridge for the first time. So, it's good enough. Right? right? Now, next. What about the slabs? Right? So, it's going to be, uh, let's see, 8 inches. Right? a hunch of two inches. Uh, let's add one slab. So now here you can play with the options of uh, usually we don't pull the slab or the entire bridge in one shot. Right? So we can say that we pull the slab in by span. One, two, and three. And again, I'm, I'm making this very simple, but if you play with the distances here, you can have many different pourings, sequences. So you can say like, this is one pour here, from this point to this point, then I fill this one, then a pour from this station to this station, and uh, then finish with this one. So you can generate as many pour sequences as you need, playing with the different offsets. Okay, so, but I can, I'm trying to keep it simple, at least for the first time. So the slop is done, and as you will see, <clears throat> that little by little, this model is coming into life. Just to 
little trivia, this screen that you see is actually a microstation file okay, that you are seeing. Uh, you can use the microstation commands to view and rotate, but this is actually a microstation element. Okay. Now, I'm done with the labs. So now let's go to the member groups. So let's define here, and that's when it comes the difference between doing an eye gutter or a top or a steel box is you would say, well, I need a group of girls, right? So let's do a group. And these um, steel boxes are going to be the same uh, or the same frame framing plan from support one all the way to the support. So basically it's going to be from support one to support four. Right? And how much is happening? Right? And you can see some reddish lines here, but this is what it means. That you're going to do in this example, two boxes, right? So two, and that's with these red lines. Of course, we don't do not right, girls. In this example, we're going to do the top, and the top, of course, is not going to be the edge of the slab. So let's put a certain distance. So the left uh, edge of the slab is uh, let's see, nine thirty-five. 75. Right, so as you can see how it moves. And the other one is going to be, well, let's make it symmetrical, 975. Right, so now I have two center lines of the tops running along the alignment. So that is the geometry. Done. Now, in this scenario, Right? Uh, some of the questions that you're asking already is, what about if some of the tops, I'm usually not having on tops, but on eye girls, if at the middle of the section I can kink one of the girls, uh, we, we don't handle that yet. Okay? So if at the middle of the span, especially if you do eye girls, usually it comes one and then kinks a little bit, uh, we don't handle this. Okay? So yeah, just to give you notice on that. It goes from support to support. What we handle, though, is variations on the girder itself. So along the span, you can change the thicknesses of any one of the girders if you need to, on the girders and on the tops, too. Okay, so let's keep going. So I hit OK here. So I got the basic geometry. Nothing happens on the design. Because now I will need to define my <clears throat> member definition, right? So now, <clears throat> on my member definition here, uh, I may go, gosh, many different routes, right? One route will be to define uh, a one by one of the elements of the bridge. So I can say, well, the bottom flange of the box will have this geometry, and it will start maybe with uh, this thickness, right? Uh, and keep building the box just like that. And then, you know, uh, also here, uh, as I added along this, the spans, right? Look, it's the first span, and then I will need to do the second span and the third span. So I'm completing the thickness, right? Uh, but it, it would be a long definition, if you think about it, right? It would be a long definition, and then on top of that, I have to do more than that. So let's do something different here. So so let, let's do something different. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let the software, right, not to guide. Uh, I, I don't want to enter this information one by one because really I don't know too much about the geometry or how it's going to happen. Right, uh, the, the, the key on that is uh, I'm not even giving a typical section, is I'm starting the design from scratch. And as you know, that on the steel code, there is uh, a lot of parameters that you need to obey, especially uh, ratios between the flange and the web, uh, different minimum and maximum thicknesses, and stuff like that. So, since I'm doing this for I would say the first time, uh, trying a, a section of the bridge that uh, I need something to start with that it's abiding to the code, right? So I would say that even on any of these members that I have nothing, 
I will let the software suggest me what plane or what it could be the starting place that I can use on my top itself. So saying that, I will say generate planes for all the beams in the groups. So these two members do it, right? It will reset whatever is existing here. Well, it will reset nothing in my case. And then I specify here what is the top front thickness to start, what will be the maximum to try, the width and will be the maximum to try, the grade of steel. So specify the minimum and maximum dimensions for the top, the bottom flange, and the web that the software can start uh, taking I mean, into consideration spans, for example. Right? So I will hit OK. And then I will have one way to start. So I just save it myself, going into the code, verify what is the ratios that I need to use for a proper top and bottom flange or thicknesses to the web itself. I'm using the wheel, ma the, the wheel of the mouse here to see the dimensions, right? And all of that are represented here. So could you imagine trying to figure out this by hand and trying to place the proper numbers? Well, the software just did it for us. Okay? And not only did it for the bottom flange, but for the web, right? Uh, for the top flanges too, in one member and also on the second one. So basically now, I have a point, a good point to start. So I'm done. I hit OK. And now I will have a bridge. Okay, so now here I can review this. Uh, for the supports, don't worry about it. We just place the supports, uh, some element to have a support, right? Later, when we go into the substructural design, you can modify the configuration of the columns, the sizes, the footings, and all of that. But we, we just support the bridge, basically, at this beginning stage. So you can see the boxes here, right? And if you want to see just the boxes, we also included these filtering option, you want to call it like that. For example, you can say, I want to see not the slabs. I don't want to see the substructure, so only the boxes. So that's what we have so far. Oops, it looks good, right? Okay, so I will just replace, see the whole bridge, right? So what will be the next step? On the standard section list, Right? As I'm preparing to define my cross frames, it would be a, a good idea that selecting any of the shapes that are included here, right? being able to say that, oh, maybe for my cross frames, when I later define that, I will use, for example, this type of channel. right? And I will add it to the list. So then when I define uh, my cross frames, my diaphragms, Instead of picking at this very extensive list, I will just select the ones that I just place here. Okay? So this is just a selection. So I hit OK. Nothing will happen. Got nothing so far. So now let's review the cross frame definition, right? Because uh, now I need to define what type of cross frames I'm doing. I already have some here, right? Uh, but just uh, selecting one and then doing one uh, from his scratch, right? it would be that, for example, I would select, uh, I want uh, a new frame, so I will add a new one. Let's call it test, for example, right? I'm going to use it in the design. But I want to call it test, and it's going to be an Let's see uh, a bigger, right? So here, when I'm going test, I said, well, this one is the top strut. Yes, I want to use it. And the channel section, remember the list that I use? That's a list. So I said, oh, I'm going to use this one. Oh, no, it's sticking out of the top lunch. So let's move the <clears throat> top right distance, right? Uh, 
or the offset, I'm sorry, the offset here first, right? So to five inches, see what happens. Right, five inches here, and then also the end is five inches to the left. Right? So you see how we shorten it? And then the top left distance, let's go uh, 10 inches here. See how it went down? And then the right here is 10. Let's see, right? Measure it from the center line of the strut. But no, no, no. I want this measurement to be, be accounted from the top. Make a big difference, right? So let's we'll keep the middle. And then specify that and specify what type of steel do I want. And just like that, I should be uh, defining, right? Defining the uh, different elements of that girl, of that cross frame, I'm sorry. Right? So that's why I have here, for example, right? Already a fully defined one, right? Flush with the with the top flange, using a different profile, right, from the top, and also for the diagonals, right? So I, I don't need this one, right? So I will delete it. It's not to give me trouble during the calculations, right? And uh, also here I got just top frame here, right? So that's how I define all these different cross frames that I later can use. So cross frame, and this is an invert D, e, and this is a cross frame D e with top of models. I can use that in this thing. So that will define my cross frames. Done. Now I need to locate it. Okay, so let's go to the cross frame definition here. Cross frame definition, cross frame definition, location. Next one. So as you can see, I'm going down the line, right? So here, how do I go into place? Uh, there are many different ways. And also the big difference here, remember that since I have a top, I could have cross frames inside the box, but also cross frame external to the boxes, right? So external to the base. So that's why I have this definition of the external, but also internal to the members, to the beams. Many different ways to place the cross frames, right? Uh, obviously, we, we can do it here, you know, one by one. I think nobody's going to do that by hand, all the different cross frames along the beams. Let's leave that. So let's use a location wizard. And now that here is your choice of what location wizard you want to use. Right? Because you can do in bulk. So basically specifying I need 10 sections. Uh, and, and let's do it. Let's do it. So to give you this. So I will place this cross frame. I'm going to use these for lateral bracing. Right? Uh, and I want it from left to right. Uh, let's do very simple. I need 10. I can do a spacing too. Okay, I'm from support one to support four, for example, and say generate. Uh, let's see what happened for that particular beam using that location wizard. So this is what you have to do if you're doing it by hand. So these are your cross frames, right? One by one, but also at the same time, these are your external bracing. So you can switch here. You can play with that. See how it changes? So these are the lateral braces, right? So that's one way to do it. Now, uh, let me delete it all. It's another way to do it. Obviously, you can do one by one, but as I said, nobody is going to do that, right? But one that is, I would say I recommend it, especially, and then later I'm going to show you a case with that, how we deal with that uh, when you have a curve alignment, right? Uh, so let me show you what do I mean by that. So let me uh, cancel this definition of cross frame location. I will open another Leibniz model that I want to have it handy when the time comes. So yeah, it's coming. So let me open another model with a, a 
this is a real life example, we say, because it's an ongoing project. Uh, I can tell you the name of who it belongs to. But uh, here we can see a good example of that definition. All right? So, see until it loads. Now, as you mentioned, this video uh, or this presentation is being recorded. What we do is we process the video and we put it into our learn server. So, uh, from that, you can access that uh, and visualize it again if, if you need to. Okay. So, let's see, it's loading the bridge. So, let's see. Let's see what uh, we do in, in this case. Okay. So, let's connection box. Cancel it. So, let's Let's do this first. Okay. Now, let me do the cross frames again, so we can illustrate this concept, right? And this is what I use. I use the location wizard on the alignment, and I would say do it only in the gutters, only inside the gutters, in all of them. Use these elements as lateral bracing, and do start to the left and to the right with an alternate orientation. So we will go left, right, left, right, left, right perpendicular to the alignment from support 1 to support 4, right, so in multiple locations, and I would say select 30 locations, so every 22, or less 25 locations, so cal it calculates automatically, right, so now I go add, right, and it will do this cross frame, um, basically, it will generate the it will generate that. So twice, <laughs> but let's go with the internal, right? Uh, and look what it has done, right? What it has done, it has generated twice. So it generated cross frames for every element, right? So, in, so let, let's delete it. Well, again, do it one more time. So let's do it one more time. So I will go location wizard, location alignment, so everything is set, uh, just hit add only one time. Okay, Alex, let's do it. Good. Okay, look what it has generated. Cross frame, cross frame, right? Cross frame, cross frame. And then it would go left to right, left to right, left to right, depending on the cross frame. Right? Now, you see how these cross frame aligns with this one? This cross frame aligns with this one? So, this is good. Uh, and that's what we want, right? But, this will happen because, in this case, it's a straight alignment, right? But on a curved bridge, this will not happen that easy, right? Because especially if you do by spacing, if you use these options, right, by ball location and go by spacing, if you go around the curve, the spacing is not the same because on the outer uh, edge, it, the spacing it's maybe longer or shorter than the other one, right? Because of the cur of the curvature. So what we, that's what we we included this location alignment. So it follows the alignment and it does it perpendicular. Now to illustrate this case, that's what I uh, loaded this other example. It's a real curve bridge, right? And if you take a look at the cross frame locations now, you will see what I'm talking about. That now each one of the cross frames line up perfectly transversal to the right. And that is that option that can only be achieved if you go locations along the alignment. Now, there is extra work to be done? Yes. Right? So, on that, what you can do is uh, when you do this, uh, right, you have the option here to correct, still correct, 
some of the cross frames. Like for example, here, you can go here and say, well, this cross frame is a little bit different. So look, this is a cross frame. And that is the option that you maybe step by step, they, you may need to fix to, to correct what you don't want. Right? It could be tedious work, yes, I understand, but we're trying to correct these two or make it a more intuitive information. So this is really what you need. Right? And as you accept this in both girders, right? So that then the cross frames are will be built into the into the saw. Right? So and that's a good example now. Well I put it right on the support. But that's a good example now how the cross frames are handled. So you want to see just the cross frames there, right? Uh, only on your girders. So this is how they look like. Now, don't worry about it. The lateral bracing, the cross elements here, they will not show up in the model, even though they are considered, of course. But they will not be showing up into the model. Okay? So that's basically how you model this bridge and now the next step on that is to decide if well I mean I got the cross frames done the cross frame locations you can define a stiffness if you want to right uh, the stiffness definition it's actually very simple same you just select one section and say it's going to be a connection plate specify dimensions and distances right and uh, the stiffener location, you can say that they will go, you know, uh, as connection plates, right, to this type on both sides on the, along the, all the cross frames, right? So, and then it will be done automatically. Here, and if I move around, I should see the stiffener plates. Right? So, the next step I would say then, well, let's try to, uh, and I got some questions here regarding loading, right? So, on the loading part, right? Uh, well, there are different ways to handle this. Let me, let me, let me show you first something. Uh, I got a question here that says, what about some uh, moving loads or extra loading during the construction phase? So here, for example, as you can see, when I did it before, I did three slabs. Maybe not the ideal placement, but I did three slabs. So here, I can decide how I'm going to build this bridge or what's going to be the pouring sequence of that. So I would say, so I will need one stage in which I do only a slab one. And then on the second stage, I do the end of the bridge, slab three. And then on one more stage, I do the middle slab, right? So I'm doing three stages. Now, uh, during construction loads, we don't handle moving load per se, right? Because it's not final, but there is extra loading applied there, right? This is what you can do. A lot of the slabs add these extra loadings for maybe the finishing machine and all of that as the pressure points. So you can add the extra loading during each phase here and it will be considered into the analysis. Now, when you define, in this case, I define what? Three stages in different sequences, right? So when I go to now to loadings here, right? Then look what he created. He created three different loads or three different stages, okay? each one with different loading scenarios. Right? Look, only building the one slab, right? Stage one of the slab. And then on stage three, for example, or stage two, for example, here, if I go and analyze, so now I have stage one and a stage two. Right? Now, the big difference that the software is doing, that in this stage two, this weight of the concrete is considered as weight, a wet concrete. And in stage one here, 
as on Purim 2, stage 1 is supposedly cured already, so it's considered, let's see, dry cock. Of course, when I go to the final stage, right, so then uh, we have well, all the live lows and the limited stage properly. Now, don't get me wrong, even if you want to consider some stage 1 here, right, so you can add extra loadings to so you know that you're going to have some moving loads, maybe not a truck, of course, but any extra loading, right? And not only the cell weight of the concrete, but you want to add extra loading. So you can go here, right click, and edit your load, right? And apply anything extra that you may uh, want to consider, right? So you can go and define, for example, a special, I would say not a truck, but something extra, right? Uh, then you can create and add uh, a, a new load or add a light load if you need to, right? Uh, and also, if you go into the second stage, right, you can uh, go here, maybe add an extra DC load. I don't think a light load will be considered because it's right to move it, but you can try some other extra loadings here. Okay? So... These are some options that, that you can add depending on, on the stage. And as you can go here, for example, go here, well, it's not considered light flow. You see in the low combinations, stage, initial stage, light flow is not considered. So you can add it as an extra, I would say, a DC load will do it. Right? So that will be maybe the weight of the finishing machine or anything like that that you consider is moving, but not as a light flow with different positions. Okay? So saying that, now the next step will be to, uh, after we verify the loads, it will be to run the analysis. Now, <clears throat> on that, a little caveat, right? Because for that, uh, we don't make any, what can I say, or uh, any idealization, right? We know that a steel box, the really way to compute it is to define it element method. That's why, this is selected and grayed out. So, by default, it's going finite element. Right? And then it will run not only uh, the final stage, it will run all the stages of design. Right? And it will represent, right, what is the meshing that is doing internally. Right? So, that is the finite element model that is created internally with all the supports and stuff. Okay? So, now, you can control the size of the meshing right here, right? And also the mesh settings here. Let me close it. Yeah? This is what we provide by default, right? And I would say don't go overboard with this because it's not going to give you any more accuracy if you need to, right? Uh, and then the next step will be to run the analysis. Now, the little caveat here, because this bridge, for example, right? This particular bridge, it will, um, let me cancel this. Uh, this bridge, if I run it, I'm, I'm not going to do it because of time, it will run maybe in around, I would say, 7 to 10 minutes, depending on your machine. But it will run basically no one model, it will run all the models. Remember, I defined three stages plus the final, so it's running four models at the same time. And giving the results for each one of them. So that final element model, uh, it will run, I would say, in around max 10 minutes, give and take. As I said, it all depends on your machine. So this is something that uh, you uh, you may need to, to consider when trying different configurations. But at the end of the day, right, when you finish this, uh, then you will have the final model. I already executed this right? And you will get all the results, right, uh, after the analysis. Or when you go into the analysis part, right, you will get all the results. As I said, see, all the stages that you have considered, displacement, moments, you know, all these options. You got the option to view it in different formats, different ways, rotate them, generate reports from it, Right? Because remember, it calculates the dead load, the life loads, and everything else. 
Uh, now also included is the, if you want to do seismic, I don't think employer would do that, but <laughs> you can do also seismic analysis, multimodal response spectra analysis, and you will get all these forces here too. Right? After you're doing this, right, and you got the analysis, the next option will be to run the design. So you are run the design, it's going to run in around five minutes to check all the points specified here. Look at the point of interest generated in this cross frame. So you will run the code and verify hundreds and hundreds of points, and each one of them, every location of the cross frame, every location of a stiffener, basically every, almost every question along the bridge, he will run a proper design code check. So here, for example, a kind of a very simple bridge, we're talking about checking on one gutter only 153 points. We're checking in each individual stage the proper code check. So basically, you're running code checks, if I have two members here, for around plus 300 points to report on. Right? Uh, and then you will get uh, all these reports, right? And I think you've seen it before, but just to give you an idea, these are the kind of report checks that you can run on print in PDF format regarding the cross-frame code checks, for example, right? And, and, well, if you have IGER, so the report checks are almost the same on all of that options. So, it's uh, uh, said very um, detailed reports that you you can get uh, in examples here. So, uh, for example, that can show you a full uh, great report here that you can generate, right? And it was well, if it's red, it's red. It didn't pass, but. You can get all these design reports. Okay. So with every, these are the ratios that I mentioned to just account for what web proportion you need to do, right? So you don't need to think too much about it. The software will just do it when it generates plates for the first time, and then you can adjust. So all these options are generated. And the biggest complaint that we have on this is that if you don't apply filters, you may have a lot of pages, right? But uh, yes, it could be, you can select for a summary report uh, or, or over design or under design reports, you can ask for all of that. But if you want the full verification of your bridge, well, I don't think that it can get any more detail than that, okay? Uh, and that will do it. That's how you generate a steel box girder. I mean, I said we didn't run it just because of time on the analysis, you know, wanna spend five or six minutes running this, but just to give you an idea that this is more or less the workflow. Now, somebody asked about, this is the design mode, but then I can go mode, rating mode, right? And then I can say, yes, add rating on that design bridge, and then it will switch everything and start doing a rating analysis. Then you will have to specify, there is no design anymore, as you can see, you will go rating, Right? But then I have to run the analysis for rating, top girder, and apply the proper permit trucks for doing that. So that is the difference between the rating mode and the design mode. The workflow is exactly the same. It's just a matter here of switching to mode rating, to the mode, the design mode or the rating. Okay. So I got one more question. He says, uh, well, I mean, and that will do it. This is the, the, the what I have for you today. Uh, let's, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, and let's see some of the questions that I was answering was I was doing the presentation. Um, but then here, uh, for example, how can Lib Bridge Steel model top flange lateral wing bracing for a steel girls? So if you do a steel girls, you can do lateral bracing, but uh, and then the multiple stages, we don't handle these. We just go, as you can see, different stages for only uh, slab pours, right? You really want to do a, a stage construction. Uh, see the how the 
rich is going to behave, for example, when you just erect the boxes, and then the structure at this time is very flexible, and you're bracing, you're facing wind effect. So you need a stage construction analysis for that. Well, leverage is no choice. Then you you should use our bridge to do that. To especially on, on the boxes itself, because uh, the box being uh, having a, a very special geometry per se, right? It, it's the wind is not just only pushes on one direction, as it assumes in the normal methodology. But when the wind pushes because of the box, it generates wind effects in many different areas. So in some of them, I would say it creates, uh, for example, in this area, right? If the wind attacks here, the goes the way the, the way the wind comes inside the two boxes, it generates vortexes, right? That affect the structure uh, of the bridge itself. So Actually, there was one uh, one uh, firm that did a study actually using RM Bridge here in Florida on, on these very tall uh, boxes that were erecting, and it was facing some hurricane winds, and they wanted to know how it will behave the structure. So the only software that can do that is RM Bridge. So you can check it actually in the YouTube page. Uh, the, the company that did it at the time was Atkins. Uh, so. This is how this is uh, done. Okay, so it's a special software for that. Now, there's one that uh, there's one question asking how we import terrain. Uh, well, well, does leap consider la any lateral wind effects? Well, yes, it will consider that, but it will be just external effects. Uh, uh, one uh, of our colleagues is asking here because here when you go into loads, right? Uh, we set it up, I mean, the software set up just the this, this standard, I would say, you know, uh, uh, dead loads and live loads. But also here you got the option to add wind load, right? And define the wind load. I'm right clicking, by the way. And then uh, define different angles of attack uh, of the wind and all of that. And then you can just say, okay, I need to consider this on the. Uh, strain one for example right. so here right so i want to consider a window group and then trying to add it here right so then it, it will uh oh string three yeah, uh, strength. so i will add it on that so it, it could be added here oh for the braiding analysis yes i will put it on the chat it's on the chat it's rm bridge Right? This is the one that actually can do all any kind of any kind of stage construction analysis, not only on steel, but any kind of bridges. It's a 4D software that actually, you know, also accounts for the creep and shrinkage effects of concrete, uh, the different stages in construction for concrete and steel, and do really, really advanced wind analysis. Not only what you were asking about the lateral uh, uh, or linear. Uh, effect of the wind, right? Because it's just one push, but actually the vortex effects, the vortex galloping and drying effects of the wind itself. So uh, this is our uh, prime software for these kind of computations. Now, regarding the terrain that somebody's asking how to do this, I would be a little cautious on that, right? Because here on terrain, you have to open the CV file and create a thin file. And a thin file, or a DTM file that is coming from Ingros. Now, tell you the truth, this is not, yes, it, it could be done, but this is not the tool to represent the ground. Because here, really, we don't listen to the ground. Okay, you have to still uh, set up the elevations and everything else. So if you want to consider the ground effects, meaning, you know, uh, the different placement of your foundations, five feet below the ground, for example, something like that, we use the DTM here or the ground just for showing purposes. But the real for calculation purposes and real rendering is the open bridge model. Here I said we show it for uh, uh, showing purposes, 
Also, what could happen is the DTM, especially on roadway projects, it could be so massive that it doesn't load all into memory because that's what we do, right? Especially you're leading with uh, LiDAR information, millions of points. This is not the software to do it. It should be in the microstation environment. And for that, it's open bridge model that we've handled all of this. Okay? So, any other question? Now, for this software, the latest release, it was released, uh, we usually do quarterly release. There should be coming one more update on, uh, on maybe around December, right? Uh, enhancements, as we have it here, you know, uh, we also now comply with uh, the Pennsylvania specifications, right, for a steel bridge analysis. So, and it's approved by the DOT. So if you are in a, uh, designing for that state, then you can be uh, assured that we comply with the, they call the DM4 standards. Okay? So If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.